In this video, I'll give you basic information related to the classifications of projections. So in the projection theory, we'll have two classifications. That means a perspective projection and then a parallel uh, projection. Normally, the uh, projection is just when we try to sketch the 3D objects into a 2D uh, media player. That means if you want to construct a home or a road or any types of 3D object into a plane like on the paper, then what will be their projection? So their projections will be two types. That means it will be a perspective projection or it will be a parallel projection. And then to understand the basic things related to this, just let me show you some pictures here. So there is two pictures here. The first one is represented for a perspective projection and the second one is for a parallel projection. In the perspective projection, it is the reality of a view. That means when you are looking something, it will be distorted on the long side. What that means when you're far from that object, or if it is far from the observer, then it will be distorted in this way. That means if you just look a road or a building just like this, the other sides of the road seems like distorted. In actual, the, the building will have the same size, just like this one. But when you look from that, it will seem as like as the object is distorted. If you take a camera, it will be just um, like a distorted shape. So we call it as a perspective projection. That means that the reality of the projection. That means as we just see, the object is distorted in that way. And then if you even look into the road, so the width of the road by itself is, will be distorted in this way. If you are just stand over here and looking far from that road, the road seems like as it is diminished or the length is diminished and then it will be distorted in its dimension and then makes a very small gap between them and then makes a short distance as you look from this direction. So you'll just observe such types of things. Even you look over this, the electric pole here, the height of the pole uh, diminished in this way and then it seems like as the height is just smaller than the previous one. It's just the perspectives of your view. That means it seems like this, but the actual object is not in this way. The reality is not in this way. The reality is just as a parallel projection. Even the name indicates that it's a perspective projection. That means it's just from your perspective. It is from the perspectives of the observer. The object seems like diminished in this way. But in the actual one, the objects are not diminished. They will have the size as it is, just like this one. So if the sketch or the projection is done with the first approach, we call it as a perspective projection. But in the parallel projection, the object will be constructed at the reality of the objects as it is, not from the perspectives of the observer or from the perspectives of us. It will be just sketching from the object as it is. Normally, in the perspective projection, we'll have one point, two point, and three point perspective projection indicated that how much vanishing point is that that object has. So, for the first case, which means for one point perspective projection, the vanishing point will be one. That means the object, the overall structures of two objects will be vanished into one common point. Now, in the actual one, the object is like this one. It, it, it will be just like a prism. But when you just try to construct it, it will have a perspective projection and then the vanishing point will be one. And then it is, if it has that one vanishing point, every corner point will be projected into that point, just like this one. And then they will intersect at that point. So once they intersect at that point, we'll measure the depth of that object and then try to sketch that object here. And then if you look over here, we'll construct this horizontal line just like this one and then this vertical line here and then once we construct the two lines the remaining lines will be constructed just we can connect the end points of the corner point just like this one from here to here here to here and then from this point to this one so finally the exact object or the reality of the object is this but from the perspectives of the observer the object seems appear just like this one and then it will have such types of shape so this is case one, which means one point perspective projection. And then in two point perspective projection, as the name indicates, it will have two point which is vanishing the surface or the object it will have. In this case, we'll draw one corner line. That means this corner line will be sketched first here. Once you just sketch in this way, the two vanishing points will be placed on the appropriate position. 
And then once you do that, the tip of the line, that means the end of the line will be projected into this point is like this one. So from this line to this point, to from this line to this point, and then from this to this and from this to this. So we'll have this four projected lines. Once we have this, we will measure the dimension into the perspectives of that object. And then from here too, we'll measure that. And then from here too, we'll measure that. And then once you get that, you'll just project from this lines and then you will get finally such types of projection. And so the projection lines will be intersected at this one. So you'll just connect the two lines just like this. So finally, you will finish it up and then finally you will get such types of object. So if you just look this object, the projections of this part on the two point perspective projection, that means it will vanish or it will be distorted into those two pointers in this way. So this is a two point perspective projection. In the third projection, we'll use the same procedures as a two point perspective projection. We'll just sketch the corner lines of this object here. And then three appropriate pointers will be placed on their own positions. Once we get that, then the end of the line will be projected into each pointers, just like this one. Once we project the two end points of the line into the three pointers, like sketched here, and then we'll try to measure the dimension from here to here, and then we'll construct that dimension, and then we can project a line into the other two pointers like this one. So once we do this, we'll try to measure the other dimension. That means these dimensions. Once we measure this, and then we can put that dimension here. And the same thing will project into the remaining two pointers in this way. So finally, we can get the intersections of the projection line. And then we can sketch all the necessary lines just like this one. And then once you do this, Finally, you will get such types of object. As you look over here, this object is distorted or vanishing into three pointers. That means it is wider here, but it will go narrow into the other three pointers. And on the other category, which means on the parallel projections, let's see some of those things. In the parallel projections, normally we'll have two types of a projection. The first one is oblique projection and the second one is orthographic projection. The main differences of the oblique and the orthographic projection is just the axis orientation with respect to the projection plane. For example, if you look over the oblique one, the oblique will have three axes in this way. That means one, two, and three axes. That means it will have one horizontal axis, one vertical axis, and one slanted axis. Whereas in the orthographic projection, it will have one only vertical axis, but the two axes are slanted axes, just like this one. But the oblique one will have one horizontal axis, but the orthographic projection has no any horizontal axis. This is the main difference. And then when we come to the oblique a projection normally will have three types of projection. That means cavalier, cabinet, and general projection. Their difference is just based on the depths of the constructed projection here. In the cavalier projection type, the depths might not be diminished. It will have its own lengths. For example, if the lengths of the depths is 10 cm, so we can project that as 10 cm. We can't diminish with relative to the others. And then for the cabinet types of a projection, we can diminish or we can reduce the sizes into half. That means it will have five centimeter depths. On general oblique projections, we'll diminish the size, but the ratio might not be 0.5. It's different from 0.5. So it can be 0.6, 0 0.7, or etc. So why we need to diminish the sizes of the oblique projection in the depth side. That is because if the given object or the constructed object cannot give important information, so we can diminish that because it will waste space or it will waste time just to construct that. So we can diminish it into a shorter length. For example, if you look over here, this is just an L-shaped object. So if you construct this object into this way, no additional information is are added here. So we can just eliminate that and then we can diminish into half or just lower than the previous length. We can save our space as well as time. So this is just how we can construct an oblique projection. And the other thing is, let's go to the orthographic projection. 
In the orthographic projection, we'll have two types of projection. The first one is axonometric projection, and the second one will be a multi-view drawing. In the axonometric projection, we'll have three types here. The first one is isometric, the second one is diametric, and the third one is trimetric. The category is just based on the axis make the angle among them. That means we know that this axis is a 360 rotation. That means it's just like a circle, and then it will have 360 degree. If they make 120 degree each, that means divided this into equal, we call it isometric. Iso means the same. So all the angles are the same. So these axes will have the same. And then from the horizontal one, when you construct in that way, from the horizontal one, you will get 30, 30 degree in this one, and then this one, this slanted surface the slanted lines here and then the other one in the diametric di means the two angle will be the same that means two axes will make 105 105 degree each that means they will have the same but the third one will be different from that and then it will be 150 degree the same issues will be 360 degree as is known so and then they will make from the horizontal with 15 degree as just like this one from the right and from the left side they will make 15 degree so if the 3d object is constructed at the projections of this into this way we call it as a diametric axonometric view and then the other one trimetric means trimetric in this case the three angles are different so one angle will be, if you look over here, it will be 105 degree, it will be, the other one will be 175, and the other one will be 120 degree. So when you construct this with your, your own paper, so you can use all those angles to construct isometric, diametric, or trimetric, axonometric projections. Normally, they will have their own advantage. For example, if the construction is based on isometric view, that means the object will have important informations on both front side and top view. And then if it is a diametric, normally the most important view will be the front and the side view. So the top view might not be that much important. And then the other one on the trimetric view, if you just look into this one, the front view and then the top view will have more important information, but the side view might not have that much information. So those views will be constructed just based on your object. That means what object will be projected on a paper or on, on a 2D media. For the multi-view projection system here, in the multi-view drawing, that means we are just looking the object from different side and then we can project that surface. For example, if you are just looking from this side, we'll get a rectangular surface just like this. And then if you are just looking from the top, we'll see such types of rectangle and then projecting such types of objects will be a multi-view drawing. We can see this one on the video, which is related to a multi-view drawing. You can refer more videos there. So this is just the classifications of projection, just based on the projection theory. If you want to know more about a projection, so you can access so many videos in our channel. So thank you for your watching. If you just enjoy the video, you might subscribe our YouTube channel and then be our family.